I love cartoons. Uh, I'm gonna be 28 this year, and I, I freaking love cartoons, man. It's a little weird, I don't know. Maybe it's me, maybe it's the issue with millennials, but when I was a kid, everybody always told me that one day I would grow up and my tastes would change. And sure, many of my tastes have changed, but not in the drastic way that I imagined. Maybe changed is the wrong word, it's more like, they evolved. When I was a kid, I was super stubborn. I only liked punk music. If it wasn't punk, it was garbage. But now, instead of waking up to Milo Goes to College, I put on Sinatra while I'm eating breakfast. The man's got a beautiful voice, you should try it. It's also kind of like punk rock in his own way, if you think about it. And then I listen to the sentence later when I have more energy. My main point is, is that I still love everything I did when I was a kid or at least most of it, particularly the anime. Every now and then I'll go back and watch something like Digimon, or a couple years ago I watched every single episode of the Pokemon anime. It's just a fun time, even though I'm a real life grown up. But today I wanted to talk about two shows that have changed my life, and probably yours too. Actually, in fact, you're watching this, so they definitely have, in ways you never knew, or I don't know, maybe you did, but you'll see what I mean. I'm talking about the original hentai power couple, Sailor Moon and Dragon Ball Z, and how these two shows are responsible for allowing you to like anime without having to walk around with a frickin' wedgie all the time. Do kids even give each other wedgies anymore? Is it like sexual harassment now? Yeah, but there, I bet you there's an app for that. Yep, Wedgie Go Funny Infinite Runner Multiplayer Game. All right then, let's forget I ever found out about that and get into how Sailor Moon and Dragon Ball Z, but particularly Sailor Moon, changed the world forever. When I was a kid, there was no such thing as anime. It was Japanimation. However, when it first entered my eyeballs, I didn't know it was different from a regular cartoon. It looked different, but I was either too young or had nothing to compare it to in order to differentiate it. That show in particular was Sailor Moon, and it was distinctly different from the Sailor Moon you can watch today. It was a kid's show in America, like a very kidsy show. Telling your friends the truth can be really hard, especially when it's going to hurt their Feelings. The real Sailor Moon as we know it now is actually gritty and deals with things like death and <gasps> lesbians. When I was about four or five, I'd wake up early and watch TV. Fun fact, I've been told I learned how to work the remote before I could walk. I was born to be a nuanced man of visual entertainment critique. I suppose that says a lot about me uh, if you think about it. Anyway, one of my favorite channels back then was UPN38. This channel had everything. Freaking Beetleborgs, Street Sharks, The Hulk, all the cool stuff. But one day, a different show appeared around the 5 a.m., 6 a.m. time slot. A show about a young blonde girl who could turn into a super superhero, and it captivated me like literally nothing else. May have given me my first boner, I, I don't know. Regardless, these were the days of shows like The Power Rangers and Jumanji the Animated Series, but Sailor Moon just had me glued. Which is impressive considering it was the Deke dub, the most censored, watered down, and edited version of literally any anime I've ever seen. Freud would say I liked it because I want to bang my mom, well I, I actually don't have a better reason. It was a cartoon not aimed at me, it was really pointed to little girls but it changed my life. And for the record, Sailor Moon was not cool, not, not for boys. Back in the boys are blue and girls are pink, what the hell is a transgender 90s, liking Sailor Moon was a good way to get those wedgies. I didn't give a hot damn dude, I own those wedgies. I was obsessed. So much so that I started making my own Sailor Moon comic about me and my friends and we were like, dude, Sailor Scouts? I don't know where that is, but I hope to God it's as dead as my hopes and dreams. But why did Sailor Moon captivate me the way that it did? Well, I suppose I'd never seen something quite like it. The animation, while not great to today's standards, was much better than 99% of American cartoons at that point, and it was different. It had a look I'd obviously never seen before. The monsters were badass, and the transformations were mm, mind expanding. Not to mention in the OP, it shows all of the Sailor Scouts fighting together, but it takes a while for them to all show up in the show. I remember really wanting to see how they all came together. In fact, the episodes where the new Sailor Scouts came into the group were the ones that were most exciting for me. American cartoons didn't make you wait for things like that. I mean, take Rugrats, for example. You see Tommy, Chucky, Angelica, Phil, and Lil in the intro, and that's what you get. But Sailor Moon understood suspense. You want to see Sailor Saturn almost destroy the Earth? You gotta wait till Season 3, Episode 30 for that. And Season 3 didn't even air until 2000, which is like five years after this shit. It took them 130 episodes to get to Sailor Saturn. Also, I think the young kids secretly being superheroes 
this thing really took me in. These were the days of the X-Men and the Power Rangers. It was one of the big comic booms. Every kid wanted to be special and save the world from the baddie of the week. And I would watch Sailor Moon every single day. You know, until the show disappeared. It only ran for four months, September through December of 1995, and then it was gone. See, back then, very few Americans cared about anime at all. It was considered edgy, hyper-violent, over-sexualized, creepo mall goth entertainment. Generally, it ran late nights on the sci-fi channel, and that was about it. And even then, those were more adult movies or shows. Otherwise, we had Speed Racer, Voltron, and Astro Boy, and that was anime here. Until something amazing happened. Toonami. Thanks to two dorks living in Atlanta, Western pop culture changed forever. Sean Akins and Jason DeMarco were given Cartoon Network's afternoon action block and tasked with making it not suck. The two would often frequent local stores dedicated to Japanese immigrants and pick up untranslated anime in their spare time, which is pretty intense. You gotta remember the internet was basically non-existent at the time. Anything that was underground, which included anime, was generally discovered through word of mouth or underground magazines and then distributed illegally with off awful VHS bootlegs. It was a good time to be alive. Between that and remembering watching DBZ ass early in the AM as kids, these two decided that they wanted to bring anime onto the scene with their newly dubbed Toonami block. It went, <laughs> well, basically they worried every week that they were gonna get canceled until they struck pure gold. After UPN gave up Sailor Moon like a cat that won't stop peeing on the floor, USA bought the rights and aired Sailor Moon R. But it was a USA channel, so I didn't even know. I thought that shit was for Walker Texas Ranger and Xena reruns. Anyway, when they were done with it, the rights landed in the laps of Akins and DeMarco, and history was made. See, the internet not being a thing was more than just having to pay for porn. It meant that all of your entertainment came from the TV, which meant what you watched was in the hands of TV execs. Until this point, Anime, when it was even on, was stuck in the 5 to 6 a.m. time slot or the after midnight time slot, aka the dead zones. But Tsunami, that was 5 p.m. That was prime time, the time when most people in America were sitting around specifically to watch TV. Our heroes took Sailor Moon and stuck it on the 5 p.m. time slot in 1998 on Cartoon Network and everything exploded. This was also concurrent with the Pokemon explosion which helped, but there was something undeniably unique about Sailor Moon, something that kept people coming back to see these pigtails kick some ass. But then, then we got the spirit bomb to the nuts we needed. The one the world needed. Dragon Ball Z. That's when I went from Sailor Moon fan and Pokemon kid to full-blown drooling anime fanatic. DBZ was everything I ever needed in a show. It was loud, it was fast, it was funny, it was violent. I don't think I've ever been as captivated by anything as I was by Dragon Ball Z in the late 90s. It was everything to me. I had to watch it every single day, despite my parents doing their best to sabotage me with stupid BS like dinner. I had it all, man. The action figures, the silk button-up Hawaiian shirts with trunks on it, the DBZ card game, the video games, the movies. Tree of Might is the best. I was DBZ kid numero uno. But I wasn't the only one. This was a national phenomenon. Obviously more girls like Sailor Moon and more boys like DBZ, but the crossover was huge and every day at five, kids around the country were locked into Toonami. Between that and Pokemon, the Gen Xers were reeling. What is this Japanimation? Why do the Chitlins love it so? How do we make the most money on it? We need DBZ Crazy Bones, stat. I have some ideas. Anime, especially then, was grittier than American cartoons. It's always been more of a medium than a genre. The Japanese don't look at it like, oh, here's anime and that's for kids. It's more like the way we look at movies or books in America. You got action movies, kid movies, romance movies, etc. But with cartoons in the West, they're mostly aimed at kids, with a few exceptions for young adults like The Simpsons, South Park, Family Guy, but most of it is comedy. We don't take animation as seriously as the Japanese, and that shows in the quality, especially back then. In the 80s and 90s, and hell, even today, America made cartoons to sell toys. The Japanese made cartoons to tell stories and sell toys, sometimes sexy toys. I think the fact that the majority of anime is based off of already established manga has a lot to do with that. The story part, not the sexy toy part. The popularity of comic books in the West has gone up and down many times, but we're always a kind of counterculture. You know, minus the 2010s geek bubble, but that's bursting real bad and comic sales are taking a nosedive right now. However, manga in Japan is 
far more popular than comics ever were here. It's a part of everyday life for a lot of people. It's taken more seriously, so when translating that into animation, it's also taken more seriously. Part of the reason Toonami worked out so well was that it too took its content and its audience seriously. Toonami wasn't patronizing at all. It even ran ads that we were interested in. I remember seeing the ad for Final Fantasy X like 8,000 times back in the day. It treated us like we were cool. The most fascinating part of this case study for me is that Toonami showed what is good Good is good. Despite anime coming from a culture that was very foreign to Americans in the 90s, despite a unique art style and often dubious dubs, anime caught on. Despite Sailor Moon being extremely feminine, boys, myself included very much so, loved it. And of course, the reverse with DPZ. I think the most important thing about anime that made it catch on in the West is that, like Toonami, it also wasn't patronizing. At least, most of it. I'm generalizing, angry commenter, okay? It's, I'm generalizing. In anime, when people get cut, they bleed. Often copiously. Hell, in some anime, when people get punched in the face, their entire bodies explode. Characters feel real emotions, deal with horrible atrocities. Anime isn't afraid to show anything. Girls have boobs, guys have dongs, robots are rad, people fall in love, and do horrible things. No punches are pulled, unless, you know, you're Saitama. It's more realistic in its depiction of fantasy, if you catch my drift. It's cooler. I said it in another video, and I'll say it again. Anime is punk rock cartoons. The scene now is different from what it used to be. In America, this is obviously thanks to expansion spearheaded by Toonami and extended by the internet, but worldwide, access to pretty much whatever you want to watch is a few clicks away and the medium has grown astronomically. The difference between anime now and the stuff that was out there when I was a kid is night and day. However, I still personally prefer the classics. Not to say things like Promised Neverland or ReZero or Akami Ga Kill or Attack on Titan or anything newer is bad. Obviously it's not at all. Much of it is more technically, artistically, and narratively sound than the classics. For me, it's simply the feel. The gritty, grainy 4x3 blood fest, samurai showdowns, and robo porn. I love Fist of the North Star, Berserk, Ninja Scroll, Akira, all the old hyper-violence body horror shows of the 80s and 90s. There's something very raw about them I find captivating, and I want to talk about all of them. But most importantly, I want to talk about the Toonami block. Some of the best series I've ever watched I found through Toonami, which I found because of Sailor Moon. Bring it back to the beginning, you know, see what I did there? It was, it was Sailor Moon, it was Toonami, and now we're here. At the end, it's all wrapped up. It was good writing. So I'm gonna start taking time to go back to the Toonami block and do some nostalgia diving here on Bonsai Pop, at least when the online ecosystem permits it. Bonsai Pop was created so we could talk about what matters the most to us. Obviously, one of those things is anime, and for myself, the years discovering it were some of the happiest I've ever had. However, there's way more than that. You got Roni Kenshin, Tenchi, Outlaw Star, Gundam Wing, masterpieces like Yu Yu Hakusho, Hunter x Hunter, I'm gonna cover all of that stuff. So if that sounds like your kind of content, go ahead and subscribe and smash that bell. Go on, smash it. That way you get notified every time we put up a new video and you don't have to wait for YouTube to recommend it to you because they probably won't. Anyway, this leaves me with the biggest question. What was your first anime? How did you get into anime? Who introduced it to you? I really find this stuff fascinating, so please leave your comments down below and uh, I will be checking all of them out. I always do anyway, so. Hope to hear from you there. Also, were you a Toonami kid? Uh, what was your favorite Toonami show? Please let me know. And last but not least, but arguably most importantly, make sure that you go check out our Patreon and join the team. For a dollar a month, you get access to our exclusive Patreon show, our exclusive Patreon Discord, which we are very active in, and the community is awesome, and a chance to get your name shouted out as our ultimate lucky patron of the week. And yes, that is a dog and rampa joke. Uh, our lucky patron this week is Payback Stab. Thank you so much for supporting the channel, Payback Stab. We love you, we appreciate you, and uh, we will talk to you in the Discord very soon. Congratulations. And special final shout out to our first Super Saiyan God tier supporter, Sammy the Hammy. You earned the shout out. Thank you so much for your consistent and awesome support here on Bonsai Pop and Tree Skull and on Twitch. Uh, we love you, dude, and we will see all of you next week for another awesome video. I'm Mike, and I will catch you next time.